Hey, what's up everyone? Thank you for joining me. My name is Brian and you are watching Game Brigade. And today I thought it'd be kind of fun to dive into the Board Game Geek hotness, see what's trending right now, what's interesting, see if there's anything that I might be interested in, and maybe conversely, you might be interested in them as well. Uh, so let's dive into that. But before we do, I want to say thank you to our channel sponsors, Into the AM. Right now, if you go to their website, they have a sale on their three pack of graphic tees where you can get up to 30% off. And if you use my link, Board Game, you can get an additional 10% off site-wide that stacks on top of the 30%. You could go there right now also and find these cool uh, tees. This is a basic tee. You can get like a six pack and I think they're about $15 a piece. I really, really enjoy these basic tees. I think their cut uh, is pretty clean and fine. Uh, so if you want to check them out, please do. I have a link down in the bio for your convenience. So with that, let's hit the video. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be diving into the Board Game Geek hotness. We're going to go from 10 to 1. Obviously, that means 1 is the hottest. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit the first game, which is Undaunted Stalingrad by Osprey Games. Uh, and this one is one that I believe I covered. I remember covering it when it was on Kickstarter. I don't remember in what capacity. I know I didn't do a Should You Back. Uh, but this game is a two-player game where players are going to be playing on the eastern front uh, is either the Germans or the Russians. And the game is a game where it's going to be taking place, uh, obviously, in the city of Stalingrad. And you play your game with these cards, uh, and you kind of play them out, and you are also dealing with these kind of tiles. What I like about this game is that this is kind of got this is a campaign, almost like a legacy like campaign in the game. And these tiles will actually be replaced. Uh, and shifted and changed based on how the game flows and goes, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I watched a review from, I watched this just having stance by Shut Up and Sit Down. It's a good review if you haven't uh, seen it or if you're interested in Stalingrad or on, on Daunted Stalingrad, I would check it out. Very, very cool. And I'm a big World War II buff. I was never a big fan of the Eastern Front, uh, but historically i just love world war ii this game looks really cool so i am very very interested in picking this up the hard thing about it it's a two-player only game and i always mention that those games are the hardest ones to get to the table because when i have a game night it's very likely we have three plus game players at the game so having a two-player game it's got to be like a special night to so be like hey call up a certain buddy hey do you want to play this game or play our campaign but without that, let's go on to the next game, which uh, coming at number nine is Dune Imperium by Direwolf. Now, Dune, I have said multiple times, is one of my top games. I love it. It's a worker placement deck building game uh, where effectively the point of the game is you're going to be playing uh, your agents to these worker placement locations. But to do so, you must play a card from your hand that has a matching symbol. So if I kind of zoom in here, if it works, it doesn't work. You can see on these cards here, there are little symbols those correspond to symbols for these worker placement locations so you play the card which means you can send a worker to a corresponding location with a similar matching symbol obviously it's like a worker placement game which means you can't send them to the same locations of other as other agents unless you have a rule that breaks that rule like a, an, a, a card or an ability of some sort um, probably what I'm suspecting Dune Imperium is trending is they just had the latest expansion come out um, which is not Rise of X. It is, uh, shoot, what is it? Uh, I can't remember. It's like Exodus or something. It starts with an E. I wish I could remember, guys. Oh, you know what? There's a way on Board Game Geek that you can literally find out by clicking expansions. Immortality. There we go. That was an E tonight. This just came out. Highly rated uh, from uh, uh, Tom at the Dice Tower. Really gave this one a lot of reviews. Um, and I have mine coming from PAX. So hopefully I'll get it soon and I can be able to get this game, add it to my collection, and get it played. I'm very, very excited about that one. So Dude Imperium already on this one. Very highly rated. Coming in at number nine on the hotness list. Next, we have Flamecraft, uh, and this was originally by Cardboard Academy, was on Kickstarter. I skipped it because the game looked a little too child-friendly for me in the sense that it just didn't look like it was going to be engaging enough for me. Uh, now, Lucky Duck Games controls, I believe, the U.S. distribution of the retail outlet of this game. Uh, I have a friend in the player group who bought this game who has a, the deluxe version or the... 
the Flamecraft version or whatever. Um, and so she brought it over to game night, and we played a three-player game. I believe it was three-player. I actually really enjoyed the game. thought it was pretty cool. Uh, pretty simple. Effectively, you're going to be uh, having these dragons. Not Let's get a better board. Um, I wish I could have a picture that shows the board, guys. Like, where's the board? There is none. Whatever. Effectively, there's like a main street, and uh, you are going to be sending your dragons to different locations that are like restaurants or shops or whatever. You get an ability, you get some resources, and you're trying to collect uh, uh, rewards. So kind of a, it's a very simple game. I will give you that. And I bought this. I did add this to my collection, but I bought it specifically for my daughter. When she gets old enough, I know she's going to love it. So it's still in seal, actually kind of in storage because... Might as well keep it sealed for her. It'll be a good gift in a few years. So Flamecraft by Cardboard Academy, now by Lucky Duck. Uh, deluxe version is incredibly hard to find. So if you're looking for those deluxe components, which kind of look like probably what this girl's holding here, uh, Lucky Duck sells them individually. But uh, these actually don't look like what I had. These like kind of look um, less clean, but whatever. They're out there. Next, we have Endless Winter by Fantasia, 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 Fantasia Games. Now, Endless Winter, again, was one of my top games that I played this year. Really, really, really liked this game. In fact, I was going to say it was going to be like one of my favorite games of 2022. This is a deck builder game with also worker placement. I always joke that that seems to be like a theme with me that I like worker placement deck builder games, but they, they play very well. So in this game, you are going to be building your hand of cards, uh, playing them for their effort cost, which we can't probably see very well here. Oh, wow. This is a good zoom actually. So we can actually kind of see it. So if we look on the main board here, this hand that looks like this that is the effort cost to do whatever action that location has so if you send your worker to a spot or a location you have to discard cards from your hand to pay the effort cost and what's cool about this game is the top section is the white section here you probably can't see my cursor maybe you can uh you can do that as many times as you can afford it and as if you, if you want to if you want to keep paying cards you can keep paying cards to the cost to get the reward. And then the yellow is a one-time benefit. And then if you are the first person to take that action a turn, you take the bonus action. I think that this is a very clean system. I love the modularity. There's a lot of different modules that you can combine into the system uh, to really get a good enjoyment from it. And I also like that there's a lot of different things that you can play with. I talk about this in the videos, uh, but you have um, you have this uh, the territorial lands up here that you can kind of do area control. You've got the uh, scoreboard, which they don't have. I don't see it anywhere. Uh, you've got the animals. Where, oh my gosh, what did I do? Whatever. You got the animals over here. So there's a lot of different things going on. I really, really like Endless Winter. Next, we have Frost Haven by Cephalofair Games. Now, Frost Haven is an interesting game because I did not back this one. I was very specifically told people I was skipping this game because Gloomhaven, while I enjoyed it, uh, I, I played a lot of Gloomhaven. I thought I got my fix of the Gloomhaven system out of me. Uh, so I skipped this one. One, Gloomhaven was very fiddly, a lot of components, a lot of stuff going on. It's just a big box game. I mean, even looking at these minions here that are available, this is intimidating. This is a lot of stuff going on that you have to manage and take care of. You also have all the tiles and whatnot. Uh, so I was kind of going through and I was like, okay. But then I was looking at some of these characters that are in the game. And the characters look kind of cool. I like some of these abilities and the way that they are. Uh, these could be spoilers. I have no idea. Uh, they look kind of cool the way they interact with people with other options, giving you some more playable features. It really makes it dive deeper into the strategy elements of the characters. Uh, I thought that the card play was the most interesting mechanic of, of Gloomhaven. The campaign element was very weak. Uh, but the, the card play is what kept me going. So now it looks like they're adding another strategic layer on that, adding some more abilities and some more uh, unique things to your character on top of the card play. So that means Frost Haven probably is going to be a pretty big hit. I'm surprised uh, that I'm being enticed as much as I am. Now, again, I didn't back this. I didn't buy it. If I find it on sale, I'm assuming it's going to be on Amazon in a few, a year at least for sale. Maybe I'll pick it up then. We'll see. Next is Arc Nova. This is obviously 
on the hotness. I feel like it's going to be on the hotness for quite a while. It is currently ranked number four on the Board Game Geek overall. So this is the fourth best game of his in all time, which is kind of crazy. Game just recently came out. Uh, I bought this. We wanted to play it for a max player count of four players. It's interesting because the community says best for one to th uh, community one to three, but best at two. And if you click this button, you can actually see where they do not recommend this game at four player. Probably. I'm assuming probably because of the length of the game in terms of how long it would take to play this one. Uh, it's very similar to Terraforming Mars, a uh, very sprawly, very long game. Effectively, you are building a park or some sort of uh, preserve for animals. Uh, and it sounds like it looks like a cool game. Now, like I said, I own this game. We've not played this because every time uh, we've had a four-player count, we've been playing some of our newer games like Endless Winter, Mosaic, um, Dune, Imperium. So we have yet to break this one out and play it, but I am excited to actually try this one soon. So Ark Nova. Uh, this is currently number four overall, and I believe it's in the top five here for uh, the hotness list. Next is Heat. Let's go to the main page. Heat, now this is by Days of Wonder, and it's been a while since I feel like I've seen a Days of Wonder game kind of been featured on one of these videos. You don't see them very much anymore. Days of Wonder was kind of like one of the best publishers back in the day, and now they're just kind of like the old, the old guard, the old school, don't really get considered of it but he has been making a lot of uh trending rounds especially within the content creator space a lot of people have been talking about this one been playing it been hyping it up and it does sound kind of cool the game is a racing game and it's a kind of looks like a card management hand management game where you're going to be playing cards from your hand to dictate the speed of your vehicle as you race around the car, but you have to manage the heat of your engine uh, because if you push it too hard, you might overheat, and then that's gonna obviously be bad. Um, so it's kind of got a push your luck uh, mechanic, uh, push your luck hand management system. Now this player board also reminds me of that airplane game uh, first in flight that I covered, which I thought was kind of interesting, kind of a similar mechanic with uh, the engine stuff here. So we'll see how it plays, but it is interesting. I've never actually played a racing game that's done well, and this is in that formula sport. So it looks kind of cool. I'm kind of curious how this one will come out. Um, and I want to see some more reviews, but I, it, right now it is do trending very well. You can see 7.9 currently here on board game geek. Next is Aeon Trespass Odyssey. This is by Into the Unknown. This has finally started delivering. You can see people have got their shipment boxes coming in. And when I got mine, uh, I thought it was the funniest thing. I got mine just recently. It's uh, still sealed up on my, my shelf up here. But I got this and I opened it like this and I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, this is like the ugliest box that I've ever seen. In fact, you can't really see it, uh, but there is some sort of design here in the middle. Uh, ignore this person standing there, but there's like something here. You can't really see it in this guy's box, but I was like, why couldn't they put something, anything like it's just really bland. And on the back, you've got this, which is the company logo, but, uh, I, dig I digress, whatever. This is not what I was going to talk about with Aeon's Trespass. This game is a game where players are basically going to be battling these massive monsters and minions. I'm not sure if any of this is a spoiler because, again, I, it's been so long since I backed this game. But effectively, players are going to be battling this system, which is a very advanced AI system. Uh, I'm not breaking into this game right now. Uh, I've got way too many campaign games that I'm involved with or that I'm wanting to get involved with prior to even thinking about this one. That's why this one is still sealed up on my shelf and it's going to probably be there for at least six months until I've gone through Oathsworn, gone through Chronicles of Drenagor. But it does look like a very cool game. I think the system that they built here, the Into the Unknown built, looks very, very cool. Um, and they're kind of very proud of the system. But again, I haven't played it, so I don't know exactly what it what it feels like and i backed this even before i did content for board game or for youtube so this was a long time ago it took a very very long time for these guys to deliver this game the number two game coming up there is pax hispanica this is by ion game design designer by phil uckland who does a lot of these historical games a lot of the pax games uh, and this game is going to be taking place in the Caribbean in the 17th century, where you're going to do a lot of things that are normal to PAX games. So you got the Tableau, Market, Blind Action, Blind Auction, sorry. Um, in this game, you're going to have four different options, like a pirate or 
um, a smuggler, whatever. You can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, actually, you can only do four things. You can do a bunch of stuff, but four of them. And really, it, it looks kind of cool in terms of what I've seen. But the other part of it is some of the components look kind of bland. And so the, the gameplay, the PAX gameplays are always what carries the game. They never are shiny, beautiful, cool-looking games. They're always carried by their gameplay. And looking at it like this, I'm like, yep, I'm going to need some solid gameplay for me to want to buy this. This looks really bland, but the gameplay sounds interesting. We'll see. Again, I'm, I'm not buying this or right now. This is on pre-order. They're not doing a Kickstarter for this one. This is available for pre-order. I'm not going to touch it with a 10-foot pole until I've seen some actual uh, reviews from people I trust. And the final game is My Little Everdell. I thought this was surprising coming at number one in the hotness list. Maybe because it's part of Starling Games and it's Everdell. Um, but if you click on the ratings, and you actually read some of these ratings, quite a few fives and sixes because people are like, it's a light game. I played this at PAX. Uh, unplugged and it's just very very light clearly made for kids between six and eight would not recommend this as an adult which is clearly it's a my it's a my little series like just like my little scythe um but from what i'm seeing it does look like it successfully uh, implements the everdell system into a uh a game mechanic that is palatable for players that are of the younger age so that's kind of cool uh the art's great it has kind of a a more childlike i mean it's still very good art for everdell like but it seemed to me when i was looking at it like really good for children you know really easily uh comprehensible like you can see this and comprehend exactly what you want to what you need to do so that's kind of cool i am looking forward to playing this one again with my daughter in years to come but not right now so that's it we're gonna go and go back to the main camera that is the video that is the board game geek top hotness i wanted to do this video because I was going back through my old videos and I covered one of these maybe in 2020 or 2021. I'm not sure when, but I did a video very similar to this then. And I thought it was an interesting snapshot uh, in history of, of what was trending at that time. So I was like, huh, I kind of maybe want to do that again because it's kind of interesting a little snapshot in time of this is December of 2022. What were people talking about? What were the games that people were most interested in? So that's kind of one of the reasons I wanted to capture this video so people can see what's interesting, see if anything strikes their fancy, or maybe be like surprised, like why the hell is My Little Everdell number one? There's so many other games that could be there, uh, which I agree. There are a lot of really good games. So I was always very surprised to check that out. If you want to find the hotness list, it's super easy to find. You just come to Board Game Geek. You got it right here. You can actually click see all if you want to see all the games um so it's cool check it out there's sometimes a lot of rotation a lot of new things and sometimes there's not so check it out see what you think that's it i'm gonna go and cut this video and talk to you all soon my name is brian have a good day Bye bye